Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well and are having a flare free day. Thanks so much for coming back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Em. I'm an endometriosis advocate here in Canada and everything on my channel is related to living life with a chronic condition. I am so incredibly excited that you have found this channel and that you're here with me today. If you're at the beginning of your chronic illness journey or at the point where you feel really confident with your pain management choices, know that I'm extremely proud of you and I'm so happy that you have advocated for your health and your body and your well-being. In today's video, I thought that we could go back to basics. I feel like I've had this channel for a little bit of time now and I talked about what endometriosis is like way back in the day, but with Endometriosis Awareness Month just around the corner starting in March, I thought what better day to just talk about the basics, talk about what endometriosis is, the signs and symptoms and treatment options that are available, and just kind of get to the basics and start fresh in 2023. So if you want to learn more about endometriosis and everything that comes with it, then please keep on watching. So what exactly is endometriosis? Endometriosis is basically where cells and tissue that are similar to the inner lining of the uterus, known as the endometrium, grow outside of the uterus. Now, I want to be really clear that the tissue found inside the uterus, that lining, is not the same tissue that is endometriosis. Years ago, uh, research wasn't as far ahead as we are now, and a lot of individuals thought that uh, endometriosis was just rogue inner lining uterus tissue that just grew outside of the uterus, which is not the case. Endometriosis lesions and tissue have its own makeup and histology that is completely separate than that of the inner lining of the uterus. Endometriosis is a systemic inflammatory disease that is irritated by estrogen. Now, the catch-22 with this is that endometriosis lesions create their own estrogen, but we know that you know, endo lesions are inflamed and irritated by estrogen. So endo, it's like its own worst enemy, you know? It's like, oh, I, I wanna be chill, but oh, I'm just creating this estrogen that's making me not chill. So basically what happens is that endo lesions that constantly create their own estrogen, specifically when we have hormone changes around our menstrual cycles, are often becoming inflamed. Now, when that endo lesion is inflamed, it often secretes an inflammatory fluid that can impact surrounding tissue that is healthy and not impacted by endo. But that healthy tissue that is close to that endo lesion can create localized bleeding. Now, the body is a fun thing, and basically when it feels that that healthy tissue is being you know, inflamed by that fluid surrounding it, it goes to heal it, which often creates scar tissue and adhesions to form. Endometriosis creates its own estrogen. Estrogen irritates endo lesions, both in tandem, constantly creating that inflammation and irritation, can create localized scar tissue and adhesions to continuously form. What a fun thing endo is. You know, when I'm speaking out loud about it, I'm like, gosh, darn it, like this thing is wild. Endometriosis is classified with four different stages, minimal, mild, moderate, and severe. Staging was defined by the American Society of Reproductive Medicine. Their criteria for the staging of endometriosis is based on the location of the disease, the extent of the disease, the number of lesions or adhesions present, the depth of endometriosis implant, the presence and size of ovarian endometrioma, so basically uh, cysts around the ovary, and the presence and severity of adhesions. Now, I do wanna say that the stage of endometriosis that you have does not dictate your level of pain. Someone with stage four endometriosis may have no pain or no symptoms, where someone with a mild case of endometriosis may have excruciating and debilitating pain. The stage of endometriosis relates more to the probability of infertility. I also wanna note that endometriosis doesn't discriminate based on age, so teenagers can definitely have endometriosis. And on the other side of the spectrum, if you're in your golden years, you can still have endometriosis. So make sure that if you have a doctor that says, oh, you're too young to have endo, might be good to have a second opinion on uh, on that or kind of reach out to another doctor that believes your pain in your story. Endometriosis is a full body disease and it impacts approximately one in 10 individuals around the world. So growing up, I never had a name to my pain. I never knew that those potentially around me in high school or even elementary school were experiencing the same pain I was. I think we were just maybe scared to talk about our periods openly or just thought, oh, painful periods are normal and it's fine. I'm just one of the unlucky ones, but it wasn't the case. And I think that, you know, if we talked more openly about it, we would have found a community that we could turn to and feel more supported in the, the journey of getting answers. So 
If you're in the beginning stages of your endo journey, just know that you're not alone. One in 10 of us have it, so we definitely have a great community here of support uh, and we're always here to help you along the way. So what are the signs and symptoms of endometriosis? This is not an exhaustive list at all. <laughs> so I wanna be clear that, you know, the ones that I'm talking about today um, are very common symptoms of endometriosis, but that doesn't necessarily negate or um, take away the pain or symptoms that you experience that might be a little bit different than this video. I just wanna say though that if you are experiencing any pains or discomfort or new changes to your body that you're like, what is going on here? please talk to your medical practitioner or doctor about it because it definitely could be suspected endometriosis or it could be something else unrelated that you just wanna make sure you check out and get some answers for. So the number one symptom of endometriosis that I'm gonna to touch upon is painful periods. If you are having a period that is making you throw up, pass out, is causing excruciating abdominal pain or back pain that you know is like a sharp shooting stabbing throbbing twisting barbed wire sensation uh, type of pain that is not normal <laughs> it's common potentially with endo sufferers but i want to let you know that it's not normal period pain to have period pain that is quote unquote normal threshold of pain is you know you're able to do the things that you love and you're able to still go to work or school and function you might feel like some mild cramping here and there, but it shouldn't take you down to the point where you have to lay down or go into a fetal position or cry because the pain is so debilitating. So it's definitely a warning sign of endometriosis that you should keep your eyes open for. And if you do experience that, I highly recommend you journal. Um, every time you experience a new pain or symptom associated with your menstrual cycle or close to it, um, that can definitely help your doctor in your next appointment feel like, you know, here are my signs and symptoms and they can kind of narrow down if it's suspected endometriosis or not. Another warning sign of endometriosis is a thing called brain fog. Now brain fog is basically where you have a word at the tip of your tongue and you, you know what you wanna say, but you just can't find the words. Or it's kind of like that feeling where you go to the fridge and you know you, you wanted something from it, but you kind of forget when you're standing in front of it saying like, what was I here again for? So brain fog is basically where you can't necessarily think completely clear. So that's definitely a warning sign that often presents itself close to or during your menstrual cycle. The next warning sign of endometriosis is fatigue. Fatigue, I wanna say, is different than feeling tired. If you're tired and you go to sleep or you have a nap or you have a little sip of coffee or a caffeinated something, um, you feel a little bit more energized. Whereas fatigue in simple terms is basically where you go to sleep and you wake up still tired or you um, just feel sluggish and low and your body just feels extremely tired to the point where you're like, I just need to stay in bed and rest because if I just continue at the pace I'm going, uh, I'm just not gonna feel like myself. I'm gonna overexert myself and feel more tired than I should. Another warning sign of endometriosis is uh, lower pelvic pain or even pain uh, radiating down to your hips, your buttocks, or down your legs. I have a video all about leg pain and endometriosis. If you wanna watch that, I'll post it here. Uh, but it's definitely a more informative video and it goes into more depth if you are experiencing that type of symptom. Leg pain is felt by approximately half of endometriosis sufferers. So not everyone with endo may experience that leg pain, but it definitely is a warning sign of endo if you are experiencing that leg pain. The warning sign is pain during or after sex. Painful bowel movements or pain while urinating is also a warning sign of suspected endometriosis. That is because endometriosis lesions and adhesions can grow around or on your bowels itself. I also have a video here if you wanna check it out around bowel endometriosis. And again, that video goes into more depth. Another warning sign of endometriosis that is a really hard one to, to know and hear is infertility. If you are dealing with infertility or going through your own conception journey, Know that my heart goes out to you and I can't imagine what you're going through, but I know that whoever's watching this and is going through that experience, that you are so incredibly strong and resilient. And like, I just, I'm just like, my heart goes for you because I just hope that everything works out for you. Now, if your doctor has said that you have unexplained infertility, 
Well, endometriosis is actually the leading cause of 40 to 50% of all cases of unexplained infertility. Another warning sign or symptom of endometriosis is uh, diarrhea, changes in bowel movement, bleeding while doing a bowel movement, bloating, which is known as endobelly, which is basically you wake up kind of bloated even if you didn't have water or a cracker or anything to eat yet. It's just painful bloating that really impacts the way um, you feel during the day. And nausea, especially during your menstrual cycle. Definitely not an exhaustive list. Please feel free to comment down below if you have different pains or symptoms associated with endometriosis. I would love to hear your experience and your, your journey with endo and how you're kind of managing those pains and symptoms. So where is endometriosis pain typically? Well, that depends on where the lesions and adhesions or even scar tissue are located in the body. For example, if you have endometriosis in your pelvic region, that's where painful sex or GI tract issues may become involved. Endometriosis on your ovaries can impact right or left side pelvic pain. Specifically when you ovulate, you might feel that pain associated with that endo lesion close to the ovary. Bladder endometriosis may lead to frequent or painful urination. The funny thing with endometriosis pain is that some individuals with endo may have no pain or no discomfort or no symptoms associated with the disease at all, yet suffer from infertility based on endometriosis lesions present. Some risk factors for endometriosis development include family history, if you have a mother or sister that has endometriosis, research has said that you have seven times the likelihood of also having endometriosis. Early onset periods are also a risk factor for developing endometriosis. Short and frequent menstrual cycles are a, a factor for endo, as well as autoimmune disorders. This includes thyroid disorders, rheumatoid arthritis, or even food allergies and sensitivities. And that list is not exhaustive and research is still ongoing for the risk factors for endo. Um, so if those don't you know, resonate with you or your experience, uh, it could just be another factor that hasn't been discovered yet. Endometriosis is often diagnosed through surgery, specifically excision surgery, which is the gold standard of treatment for endometriosis. And through the surgery, the endometriosis specialist will visually see the presence of endometriosis tissue and they will confirm that that is endometriosis tissue through a pathological biopsy. While endometriomas and nodules of endometriosis can be seen on imaging such as MRIs and ultrasounds, oftentimes uh, endometriosis can kind of hide from those imaging techniques. So if you have an ultrasound or MRI and they say, oh, we don't see endometriosis, it may not necessarily mean that you don't have endometriosis. Basically, a negative imaging result does not necessarily mean that you don't have endo. All medications aimed at treating endometriosis oftentimes just manage painful symptoms. It doesn't necessarily treat the underlying cause of endometriosis. Like I've mentioned, if the endometriosis lesion is always present in creating that estrogen, that chronic pain and inflammation will always be present in the body. Excision surgery for endometriosis is when you have an endometriosis specialist that will go in during surgery and actually remove the endometriosis lesion, making sure that the width and depth of the lesion is removed, uh, and doing so will actually remove the inflammation and irritation uh, being caused throughout the body. Unfortunately, most OBGYNs don't necessarily have the, the specific training uh, to see endometriosis in surgery, so you wanna make sure that if you're leading towards surgery to treat your endometriosis, that it is excision surgery done by an endometriosis specialist in your region or country. It's important to note too that excision surgery, if you're going that route of surgery to treat endo, is the first step, but not the only step. Oftentimes there's a multidisciplinary uh, treatment routine and road that we often have to walk to manage painful symptoms associated with endo that may remain after surgery. This can include pelvic physiotherapy, nutritional approaches, and so many more. I do wanna say that there are two things that are often seen in society that are said to kind of cure endometriosis when in fact they are not cured. Uh, the first is a hysterectomy. Now, a hysterectomy is a cure for adenomyosis, which is like a sister disease to endometriosis. But uh, endometriosis, like I've mentioned, is a full body disease. You might have endometriosis lesions present around your diaphragm. You might have it around your bowels. Um, so removing the uterus or having a full hysterectomy uh, may not necessarily remove those lesions for endometriosis that are in your diaphragm or around your bowels. So you still might have chronic pain and symptoms associated with endo, even though you're like, well, I just had a hysterectomy, like I should be cured. Um, so that's why we say you, you don't necessarily have to have a uterus to have endometriosis. Another thing that's seen in society that's like a cure for endo when it's not is pregnancy. 
I can speak for this firsthand. I recently had a baby girl in November of 2022, and I still have endometriosis symptoms that are present today. I had endometriosis symptoms present throughout my pregnancy, and they were actually worse in the first trimester than I felt typically. So I just want to be clear that pregnancy is not a cure for endometriosis either. Right now, there is no definitive cure for endo. Excision surgery, like I've mentioned, is a great gold standard treatment, but oftentimes, or in some cases, endometriosis can grow back. So this is kind of like the hard truth that we have to play with in the community that, uh, you know, surgery may be an option, but if it's not an option for you or you're just not quite there yet in your journey, there are other ways that we can manage pain, like I've mentioned through those different methods. Right now, the cause of endometriosis is still unknown. We have those risk factors that could play a part in the development or your, your likelihood of getting endo, but the main cause of endometriosis is still not quite known. Research still needs to kind of buckle down and get to the bottom of it. There are some natural remedies that a lot of those in the community lean towards to kind of find pain management methods that work for their unique body. Some of these include having a hot bath, using a hot water bottle to alleviate some cramping, using a TENS machine, uh, stress management, acupuncture, massage, pelvic floor physio, anti-inflammatory diet, gentle yoga or even exercise can be an option, but not all options work for each individual because our bodies are different and unique. So what might work for me for pain management methods may not necessarily work for you. Uh, so make sure you kind of like test out different things, see what works for you or see what works for your friend with endo uh, and kind of go from there. I always recommend baby steps, like don't jump into something immediately and think I'm, it's gonna cure me or make me feel so much better. Uh, just make sure you take baby steps and always in consultation with your doctor. So if you're changing your diet or you're doing different things or moving your body in a new way, just double check with your doctor to see am I cleared to do this. So at the end of the day, this is basically endometriosis in a nutshell. I hope that this video has been helpful and informative and allows you to just feel like we have a basic understanding of endometriosis moving forward in our journey. I know that there's a lot of like misinformation out there, but I'll include the resources that I've used down below if you wanna do a little bit more reading on your own. And again, I would love to hear more about your specific endometriosis journey in the comments down below. Uh, anything related to your journey, I'm down to, to see and hear and listen about. And you can find me also on Instagram and you can DM me there if you're more comfortable to do that uh, privately between us. So. Yeah, I hope that this video has helped and I cannot wait to talk to you on the next one.